Yeah. So uh, obviously I'm a big fundamental guy. I have been uh, my whole investing slash uh, trading career there. Um, so I, I love to see these things. Um, you know, I love to see the relationships, the former relationships, uh, getting back to some kind of normalcy. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, I think value is always important, but I especially think it's important in what you just described, which is a, a you know, an interest rate uh, hiking market, uh, you know, or economy, I guess you want to call it. So today we're going to talk about something called operating cash flow. So essentially, there's a lot of different things that, that, that it, so there's, there's, there's categories of people that look at, uh, at, at equities. Okay. You've got the, the people who manage the individual investors. You got all three types of, of folks that are looking at these different numbers. There's a bunch of different numbers that we look at. There's net income, there's earnings per share, there's free cash flow. There's one called operating cash flow. Now, what operating cash flow is, and it's tied to net income and it's tied to free cash flow, and I'll, I'll extol those uh, those differences in a minute. But what it is, is essentially when you break it down, it's how much cash the business is getting from its ordinary, regular running of the business. Okay. And so when you start to think about that, you say, okay, every business that runs a business has to have cash to operate, right? Well, the, the reality is, is if you make money, if you make capital, right, and, and you, you are able to keep and use some of that capital, then you don't have to go outside uh, necessarily for uh, finance to either A, run the business or B, expand. Expansion is the big one, right? You know, in, in, you, know you, get, you get some companies that are really good at borrowing money and, and then buying other businesses and things like that. There are those companies, but a lot of companies, when they try to expand where they're going out to get more capital, uh, it can put it can put pressure on a business. So if the business itself makes a lot of money and has that 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 cash flow available for operating or for expansion, it's in a much better fundamentally sound position than than if it's got to go borrow the money. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm always a big proponent of using other people's money. So borrowing can be good. It depends entirely on the on the uh, business itself. But what it shows is when a when a company's actually making really good capital or cash flow, operating cash flow in the, in this in this perspective, right? It shows that they can manage a business. Well, then I have more confidence in that business if they want to go out and borrow money to expand you or or you know perhaps pick up market share or buy other businesses things like that. Amazon's probably one of the the best examples of that. You know they they were a company that made money, but they're also a company that used uh, you know other people's money to acquire more businesses, and they've done pretty well. Um, so, but when we start thinking about operating cash flow, basically what it is is you know we have that in, we have that net income number. OK, that net income number is something that a lot of folks look at. You want to see that net income usually going up, ideally, right, kind of on a trend. A lot of these numbers that we're looking at, you're going to want to see trends in these things. And I'll explain that in a minute when I get to that point. But you've got your net income. Now, the problem with net income is it doesn't take into consideration certain accounting principles. And so it's kind of like a really uh, it's a really bird's eye view of, of what a company is doing. There's a lot of stuff inside there. That, that gets gets a little bit muddled up when you just look at net income. Now, if all you can see is net income, it's, it's okay to look at it. But when we want to look at clarity, there's, there's a couple other things that we can look at to get a, a more clear example of how well the business is running. And that one, one of them is operating cash flow. And then the, the second one is free cash flow. Okay. And I'll talk a little bit about the two differences there. But essentially, if we look at operating cash flow, it's net income plus any non-cash expenses minus an increase in working capital. What does that mean? Well, let me give you an example. A non-cash expense is like depreciation, uh, you know, stock-based uh, compensation where they, you know, they give out shares, but but there's no there's no immediately no immediate cash impact there. When you have depreciation, you know, the, there's 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 a an imp, there's an impact there, but it's not out of the cash itself. It's about the overall run of the business. So it also have unrealized gains and losses, but that's the non-cash expense. When you talk about change in working capital, this is where money is actual cash is used up. So, you know, we can think of uh, an increase in inventory. If a, if a company goes up and buys more inventory, their cash is lowered. Okay. Which is, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. But it, it's important to know how well that cash is being used. 
um, you know, increasing count receivables. If you if you have a account receivables that go up, that means you haven't collected the cash from from the customers. That means you don't have that money to run the business or to expand. So th so that's an important metric. So when you get up, when you get the, this number worked out, you have to ask yourself, well, why does this matter? What does this matter? What does it mean to us? Right. Um, you know, question becomes, could we just look at net income and be done with it? Well, you could. But like I said, you'd be looking at it, you know, from a from a very wide perspective instead of kind of, you know, clarifying the situation. So this is what operating cash flow does. The difference between income and operating cash flow is basically that, like I said, the accounting principles that 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 are used can cloud uh, some financial metrics. OK, and what we want to do is we want to have a clear picture of the cash flow that the company is producing. OK, so, um, you know, when we start looking at these things, we, we can see, you know, you take a net income number, you take an operating cash flow number, you can see a big divide in, in between those two sometimes because of all those accounting practices and, and because of the things that are in net income that are not in operating cash flow, it doesn't give you that clear picture that we need ideally to, to see if a business is, is running well. And, and this is what this comes down to. This is how efficient is the business. We've been talking about efficiency of the business for, for, for a couple of weeks now, and this is more along those lines. So when we start getting some operating cash flow, we can look at the trend of it. We can see if it's going up or down. Uh, we can see, uh, and I'm going to show you those numbers in a second. Moreover than that, though, when we start looking at operating, ca operating cash flow, sorry, um, you can start to see how a business really makes their money. And I think this is probably the most important thing for me as an investor, as a trader, um, is I want to know how is a company making its money? If a company is making its money off of something like investing or financing, as opposed to running its core business, that can be a little bit problematic. And I'll show you that in a second. Um, what I'm looking for is a company that creates money, okay, that, that can keep the business running and then has the opportunity to do either invest in, in other things, whether it be its own business or other businesses, and then also financing activities. So if we go and look at a few numbers here, and it's uh, very easy to, to see all of this stuff and compare them. If we just go into financials here, you always see that we've got an income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow. Okay, so we go to the cash flow statement here. Okay, I'm going to group these together so that we can have a conversation about this. Okay, you've got basically three ways that a business makes money here. So we got cash flows from operating activities. That's the one we're looking at today. You've got cash flow from investing activities, and you've got cash flow from, from financing activities. Okay, you're going to see three different numbers here. So we've got 12.8 billion uh, from, from operating activities. So this is the actual running of the business for the last 12 months. TTM is trailing 12 months. Then you've got investing opportunities and then you've got financing. You can see that financing actually costs the money. But when you start to break these open, you can see a few different things here. We've got the net income, we've got uh, depreciation, you've got all this stuff mixed together to give us this, this actual number. Count receivables, all these things are, are worked into it. What matters to us is this number here and saying, OK, are they creating enough money to run the business? Well, when we break that down, you can absolutely see that in this case, Coca-Cola is very good at creating cash flow for themselves. Now, if you look at the investing activities, there's a couple of things you want to look at here. OK, you know, purchasing investments. What are they doing with the capital that they got? Right. Well, they're, they're investing in other businesses. Or if you look at the sales and maturities, they're actually making money from investments as well, which is also fundamentally speaking, a good thing for a company. We want to see that kind of thing. And then the other investing activities don't really mean that too much to us. Now, if we look at it from finance, okay, this is where I think the rubber meets the road when you start looking at these kinds of numbers, okay? Debt repayment, okay? Is a company getting rid of its, its long or short-term debt? That's a good, that's a good solid thing. That, that means, you know, if you just think about it as a, as a person, if you have low debt and high income, you're probably doing pretty well for yourself. It's very similar for a company. Now, what I really like about these numbers is it shows you that, you know, they issued some common stock, but they also bought back some common stock. Okay. The buybacks, share buybacks for a company also tells you that fundamentally they're doing very well. If they're, if they're willing to shrink the pie of shares, okay, then you know, the, each each share has a little bit more value to it. And so that's a good thing for the people that are actually holding those shares, namely us, right? Then it shows dividends and these other things. So 
why do I look at this stuff? Well, let's let's take a company that's a little different. Now, this is Coca-Cola. It's 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 fundamentally rock solid. But let's take something that's more of a growth company. So I looked at Neo here, Neo Inc. Okay, and I looked at their fundamentals here. Okay, so so same kind of thing. So they had some cash flow right for their for their uh, act operating activities. Okay, they had a negative from their investments. Okay, and then they said some positive from the finance. So we got to look these up and, and see what what the underneath looks like. So net income was actually down, but as you can see, it's trending in the right direction. Okay, so their net income is actually falling off. So so that bodes well. Okay. And then you got all these other numbers here, stock-based compensation. Uh, they gave a fair bit of stock stock out for, for probably, you're probably looking at, uh, you know, uh, members of the company, employees of the company getting that, I would most think. Um, so, so that's one thing. Now you look at this. So you look at investing from, from uh, activities and you can see that they have a very negative uh, investment here. So what this means is they've gone out and they purchased a lot of investments, okay? They've sold some as well, but they've purchased some. So this number is really, like that's that's a really, uh, you know, uh, it's a big number in comparison to what it's used to be. Uh, th they're putting a lot of investment out there. Now, whether that's in, you know, uh, their own business or other businesses, like you can see investments in property. So you want them to spend money on their own business, but clearly here they're purchasing other investments. So they might be trying to get market share or something like that. But that's that's a number you have to pay attention to. And again, that number is considerably bigger in the last 12 months than it has been in recent years. So that might be a red flag. Now, here's the one that, that I thought was very interesting from, from Neo perspective here. So common stock issued, $20 billion worth of common stock issued, $34 billion in 2020. Okay. So what this tells me is their cash flow is coming mainly from financing activities. They're issuing common stock. Well, what that's doing is that's diluting the share pool. Okay, that's the the shares that you have are, are uh, you know are worth less because it's a bigger bigger cut up of the pie. And the other thing that stood out to me here was common stock being repurchased. They they haven't repurchased any in a couple of years here. Okay, so does this mean that this is a bad company or anything like that? No, but what it says to me is that a lot of their their cash flow is coming from these activities as opposed to from the business okay and that can be a red flag or that can just be a typically uh you know you talk about a growth company okay but still you can see the trends here and this is what comes important when you look at fundamentals so they they uh net change sorry um so in in financing 11 billion 3 billion 41 billion 26 billion so you can see that they they've been actively getting more from financing as opposed to getting it from the business okay they lost a bunch lost a bunch made a little bit made a little bit more so they are making some from opportunity uh operating but they're also getting a lot from financing so these can be little red flags and you can compare these to other companies i could compare this to nicola a very similar type of company uh to neo right same kind of uh space i guess you you would call it right so we go look at their financials just very quickly here now their numbers are very small in comparison obviously you know they're they're in the the hundreds of millions as opposed to billions but again, you know, you look at these kinds of things. So they're at a negative cash flow. So so they've got to get money from from outside to run their business. That's 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 a red flag right there. Uh, you know, financing activities here. OK, we look at that there. You know, they they haven't any they haven't put any stock out. So, uh, you know, that actually bodes a little bit well for them, I think. Um, so you can break down these numbers at the end of the day. Really, what we're looking for is trends in these types of things. Do they have enough cash flow to op uh, operate their business? In this case, this one's struggling a little bit. Neo's a little bit better. Uh, Coca Cola is much, much better. Um, you know, we want to look at those things, and then we want to compare them to similar things. Okay, that's really where these numbers come, and then fundamentally, we can make a decision. Okay, do I want a company that makes money for for producing products, or do I want a company that that, that mainly gets their income from from uh, share share um, expansion? Right. So so there's two different things there. Really, I think the more more fundamentally sound companies are making money on the products they produce. Now, as you can see, something like a Tesla, you know, over time, they produced a lot more uh, cash flows from operating activities because their their business was increasing. And you can see that in the trends. And that's what we look for here. So at the end of the day, operating cash flow. 
uh, a very good metric to kind of look at and really get an idea of where the business is creating their cash flow. How much is it? Is it trending in the right direction? A year here, a year there where, where their, their, their cash flow from operating activities is lower, not a big deal. But if there's a trend there, that could be a red flag from a fundamental perspective.